There aren't many good looking budget cars out there. I can only count this Grand i10 and the Suzuki Swift. Others are just a compromise. I bought Agias and the Quid. Even the Picanto doesn't really cut it, except the X-Line. This is another video as we explore the budget car segment. During this video, I will take you through the design of this car, its features, engine choices, and lastly, we'll look at how much owning this car will cost you per month. So without further ado, welcome to Cars24 and welcome to this video. You get two trims to this Grand i10. Base model is this motion and the spec level above this is the fluid. The difference between the two trims is the engine, which I'll tell you more about shortly. You don't have front fork lights on the motion, you don't have park assist, the steering wheel is not leather wrapped. You get cloth seats in the motion whereas in the fluid you get artificial leather and the motion has steel wheels, they are not alloy. And interestingly, the price difference between the fluid and the motion manual is a whole 48,000. But at least you're not getting the same engine as with some manufacturers inflating the price for very useless features but anyways you get two engines there's a one liter three cylinder normal aspirated engine that put out 49 kilowatts and 94 newton meters of torque this engine is available in the motion and the full spec level fuel consumption is estimated to be around 5.4 liters to 100 kilometers for the manual and 5.9 liters to 100 kilometers for the automatic Another engine which is only available if you buy the fluid spec level is the 1.2 liter normal aspirated engine. This one puts out 61 kilowatts and 114 Nm of torque. Fuel consumption is estimated at around 5.9 liters to 100 km for the manual and 6.9 liters to 100 km for the automatic. The engine figures are not really exciting, but for a small car like this, you won't really need much power to keep you going. In terms of how this car looks, it's out there with the best looking budget cars even though they aren't many. I like the position of this headlight, right at the corner of this front profile. The front grille makes the Grand i10 stand out from its competitors. In the fluid, the grille has some chromy light, making it look more cooler. It also has boomerang shaped LED daytime running light at the corner of this grille, and there are front fog lamps, which this motion doesn't have. On the side, you get 14 inch steel wheels on the motion, and the fluid get 14 inch alloy wheels. Oh, and the side indicator on the fluid is located on the side mirror, which is not the case for the motion. The rear is smartly designed as well. It features rear tail lights and again situated at the corner of this car. Same with the headlights. The boot space is 256 liters, not the biggest boot in this class, but I'll take it. Underneath the fourth floor, you get a space saver spare wheel. This is a small car, so you won't get much space at the back seat, but two adults can sit comfortably. You get rear air vents, a USB port, child seat and cars are available, and the rear seats do fold but as a single bench, there's no 60-40 split. Now in front, the car is pretty basic. This motion doesn't get a leather wrapped steering wheel, but you do get this instrument cluster and this infotainment screen, which support both Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. The air conditioner is manually controlled, there's a storage area for your mobile device, a single USB port in front, and the glove box is average in terms of size. This motion doesn't get leather seats, but at least you get this thread stitching to liven up the interior of this car. The dashboard is made of plastic material, which is what you expect in the budget car. Overall, I really like the interior and the exterior design of this Grand i10. This item is offered with Hyundai's 5 year or 150,000 km warranty with an additional 2 year or 50,000 km powertrain warranty. Road assistance is 7 year or 150,000 km and your service plan is just 1 year or 15,000 km which is basically one service. So if you're planning to keep this car for longer, you better ask for an extended service plan. Now let's move on to the pricing of this car. It is slightly more expensive compared to the budget cars I've recently reviewed. It starts from 220,000 and goes all the way to 298,000, which for me anything above 250,000 is no longer a budget car. But let's say you finance a 220,000 car over 72 months at an interest rate of 11.25% with no balloon rate deposit. You can expect to pay around 4,307 rands per month. Add 851 rands for full tank and let's say 1,200 for a comprehensive insurance cover. This will take your monthly cost of ownership for this car to around 6,358 rand. So 
So it's this hundred grand item worth buying in my opinion. At this price point, you are spoiled for choices. From the well-loved Polo Vivo to the Renault Quid and everything in between. I think this grand item is worth your consideration. That's it for this video. If you love the content, just simply like and subscribe. And tell your friends, siblings, colleagues about the channel. Thank you in advance. We will meet again on our next video. Until next time. Peace.